All right, what's up, class? This is Optimus Fields at My Living Truth. We're back for another teacher's lounge. We're at block height 685,096, and the current price of Bitcoin is $37,972 per Bitcoin. This is, I believe, episode 90. So welcome, guys. Welcome. And Jessifer, man, what a week. Uh, bullish or, or or bearish week to you? What what's your thoughts on this? Are are we pumping or what? I mean, I, I feel like a, we were like what is this, a pump for this. ants? Dude, <laughs> <laughs> we were we were in the trenches last week. Um, I'm glad to see we've made a little little recovery. But uh, yeah, big week. Um, really excited to to go over it with you all. Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly, guys, I thought Bitcoin was dying. I thought, I thought it was dead. You know, I, I thought we had to wrap it up last week. We were just, uh, we, we didn't know it then, and uh, apparently, it didn't die. So, who would have thunk it, guys? Who would have thunk it? Um. All right. First off, we we got some announcements. We had, we had some things that happened this week, and some things that are gonna happen next week. So, the first one we have over here, Jester brought it up. Our boy Ben the car man lost his iPhone, didn't have his authenticators backed up. So, guys, you know, first and foremost, let's let's back up all our phones. You know, make sure our stuff is safe and secure. And and I'm guilty of this. I have I haven't backed up my authenticators either. So I I, I was getting sweat to reading those tweets during this week, and uh, it really kind of made me realize, like, all right, I got I got to go do some homework. I gotta, you know, sec- secure the bag, but uh, I don't know, Jessifer, do you, did you want to chime in on that, or did we cover that good enough for people? Uh, yeah, I just want to say, like, two-factor authentication is like an amazing security technology to keep all your stuff safe, and you know, be more resistant to like SIM swaps and all those types of things. But uh, it's, you need to have a backup. Uh, so yeah, uh, take some time and do a little research on on how to do the backup for the the two factor authentication method that that you like to do. Um, so usually that's like a Google Authenticator, or uh, there's a couple other versions of that. Let's go. Uh, that's just just some housekeeping for you guys out there that probably aren't aware of all the little nitty gritty. The next one. This uh this came up after a couple tweets. I believe it was 6102 that that posted it that came to my attention, but next week is uh the Bitcoin Conference 2021 and just a side note for you guys, try it to do your best to maybe bring a burner phone, maybe not bring your laptop to the conference. We don't know if there's going to be some nefarious activities, some bad actors out there trying to steal your information on your phones, your laptops or what have you. So, you know, just a little PSA, maybe maybe leave your iPhone at the hotel room in a safe space at your Airbnb and and bring out a burner with you cuz you you never know, you know, don't jump on those 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 free hot spots out there cuz you may get wrecked, guys. Um I don't know, Jessifer or Dylan, I don't know, you're part of the Bitcoin kindergarten or Bitcoin conference crew. Do you you got any any thoughts on that one or um about like just about like, like, like phone burn, thing yeah just burner phones leaving your laptops yeah maybe maybe show the conference for people i don't know yeah uh i don't know i joe joe said some stuff about that and um matt odell is an advisor for the team and so i mean you guys know matt um just like very privacy oriented um i i mean I, i'm bringing my phone and laptop <laughs> like uh <laughs> I, I yeah I mean, I, I don't know, like maybe a, a VPN or don't join the hotspots. Um, you know, I, I think in general it's it's safe, but it can't hurt to be, uh, you know, uh, overly cautious. Maybe, you know, just leave your, if you have a burner phone, great. Um, but uh, the conference in general is going to be 
freaking awesome. Uh, 10,000 people going about, I think, I mean, that's how many people are signed up. I think they said that around 10% uh, to 15% are estimated to like not come uh, just based on prior events similar to this. So uh, I don't know, but yeah, I mean, Ron Paul is opening the event up. Amazing. Um, wow. Just some, some awesome speakers. Um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be great. Let's go. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to to see familiar faces and new faces. So it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun time. Uh, I I forget who was was it you Bap that said uh the oh no it was uh dang what's your, what's your what's your name uh kill them not me saying he saw a tweet it was a meme of the the like rocket guy with a button and it was like listen listen to the conference or get drunk with plebs. And uh, yeah, a- anyone that that knows what happened at Bitblock Boom knows knows which button I'm going to be picking. So I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> I plead the fifth. It's gonna be a good time. <laughs> all right, all right, guys. Um, I guess I guess the first thing, like, first thing we'll get into is is all the the energy mining fud, the mining council. Does uh, anyone have a good recap? Uh, Jester, do you have a good recap? Any anyone uh, eloquent on what happened this past week, or or I can do it, I guess. Um. So, if you're sleeping under a rock, you're not on Twitter. This last week, we not only had a price drop, but everyone and the Pope came out saying about uh, energy fud. I don't know if the Pope was directly talking about Bitcoin, but Elon Musk. And I, I mean, even China FUD came out this week about mining. And then so they, they all they're all saying, you know, mining's bad. It uses too much energy, too much electricity. And, you know, in in that vein, Bitcoin is bad because we're going to boil the oceans. It's the same old FUD that we've been hearing for forever. And then it culminated in Michael Saylor and Elon Musk. Uh, doing what they were calling what was it the Bitcoin Mining Council of America, and uh, they got a lot of shit on Twitter. It 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 turned into a shit show this weekend. Not only did the price drop, but everyone was slinging shit at each other, and the energy fud debate just it popped its its ugly head again, guys and. Everyone had to freaking rehash the same old stories that we know, the same old narratives. So, guys, uh, anyone want to jump in on this, or or am I just gonna keep rambling on on what happened? So, uh, yes. yeah, one one little tidbit on there is like Mara, uh, a oh, blockchain. Yeah, I forgot about that. Like that's that's the group that that is actually uh, trying to mine uh, not only uh, like environmentally friendly blocks. But they're also trying to do OFAC compliant blocks, which is mean, which means that they're actively censoring transactions. Um, so well, I would love everybody's thoughts on that. Half so one saying poor some, Mara. <laughs> right. Like I've got I've got some thoughts on that. So two things. First off, like impossible to track ownership of every address on the chain. The the costs of that kind of chain analytics are insane. And then Second, but more importantly, it like to me, it just expresses a, a fundamental ignorance of how Bitcoin works. I mean, each block builds upon the previous block. It's not like they're isolated in a vacuum. And so like when you're not like, although maybe there were no transaction addresses on that, like on that block, they are still could be reinforced and, and furthering the confirmation certainty of every single transaction that's came before it. There is, a, I mean, so like what they're doing is just like this, like lip service to the government. And I, I mean, it, it's not going to work, but I, the sad part is just seeing them try to basically bend the, at the knee and appease to the government. And it's not gonna, there's not like a way to do anything about it. Um, but yeah, that's my, that's my thoughts. The blocks like reinforce themselves. So it's completely asinine concept. I saw some, uh, some 
some people were in in one of the blocks at Mara Mind. Um, they were sending, uh, I guess, like tainted dust in in how uh, Marathon would define uh, taint. Um, you know, just not compliant uh, transactions or UTXOs. Um, and and correct me if I'm wrong. Someone hop in here. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I think Coinbase transactions, like like freshly mined Bitcoin, I think there has to be. Uh, there's a lockup period, right? Yeah. Um, like what is it? Oh, 50, yeah, they 50 blocks or Coinbase yeah. rewards. I saw that. <laughs> yeah. So so you can't you can't move out of that address for you know 50 blocks or 100 or whatever it is, and so, and oh, so for, for... they sent. I'm sorry. So for like the people who like aren't familiar with what happened, like essentially they someone like who was on a blacklisted address, right? They sent coins dust to their block reward, which made like their own Bitcoin OFAC non compliant. <laughs> so it's like you can't use that now. That's what happened. It, right? it just like showed the hypocrisy of it all, you know. Right. And that <laughs> they just it can't like it just won't work, you know? Like, the, the energy FUD is one thing. You know, I, I can see why people fall into that trap and, and they're, oh, you know, Bitcoin uses too much electricity, quote-unquote, but, like, Bitcoin just needs energy to, to mine blocks. So I can see the misunderstanding on that. But, like, you guys are saying that the real, the real I guess, like, nefarious action here is is the Mara OFAC compliant list and if if they even if so like if it goes down into the future where uh, miners in America have to comply with these lists and this mining council is somehow able to regulate that compliance then that is definitely the you know it can B, it can make it can make like trouble for for Bitcoin miners, but like we're saying, it it's it's going to be really hard for them to to comply with this to regulate this, and so it does seem like it's just lip service to I don't know what like the powers that be, maybe the masses, but on that same token, guys, the let's let's talk about this. Maybe maybe debate me. Maybe maybe this is being a little optimistic. But does it kind of feel like Sailor is is doing like some forty chess PR move here? You know, like maybe maybe it's he's just like saying what people want to say or or want to hear, and then you know they don't nope. really do anything about it. Or is that just giving him a little a little too much leeway? Because I was definitely one of the guys that was talking shit on Twitter. I I even did a tweet today and saying that I I created the dumbass Bitcoin Council where we just stack sats and are complete bulltards. So, like, I am definitely someone that had mocked it. But is this not that big of a deal? I, I saw, like, Nick Carter did a pretty good tweet. He's like, um, billionaires act creating a council to control mining sounds a lot worse than uh, 10% of the hash rate complying to show the transparency of energy use that they were going to do anyways. So... Is this are we being too lenient on on one side or was all the all the kicked up dirt uh like on 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 good good faith on our part? Michael Siller let me down. He I don't like the the look of this council. It doesn't it to me it, it I don't I I personally don't think he's like he he's gonna be on our side like the pleb side like he's a billionaire like like it or not he controls a lot of bitcoin and his company is very much tied to it now and so i think like to look at the optimistic side maybe he's trying to you know parlay his network into education and you know if you want to take the optimistic outlook but to me, like if you're a if if you really if you know that all of this OFAC mining and and green blocks are are, are BS, then you know why are you entertaining the narrative? 
that's that's like where that comes from, at least in my perspective. Wisdom. Dylan? I I would say um, I guess my opinion is I think Sailor gets it. I think Sailor uh, knows that I, I don't think it's hostile and, and you know, giving him the benefit of the doubt here. So maybe, you know, I hope he doesn't prove me wrong, but I like, you know, I'm not gonna, I would, you know, happily slay, slay our hero, you know, if, if it, if he did, if it did turn out to be a hostile attack, but I think sailor understands despite how stupid Musk and his comments are, um, you know, Elon's dumb tweets, the, the, the energy FUD, like saying that, you know, uh, receiving Bitcoin uses energy and it's too energy intensive, but holding Bitcoin, despite the fact that mining <laughs> uh, secures the entire chain, right? Like that's just Bitcoin 101. And like, I, I think, but what uh, I think we have to, you know, we can't understate how important uh normie narratives are one um and and like i mean i was just in college last year at a pretty liberal school guys like the environment climate activism larp is so strong like and so just just you know even if it's bogus or not like the transparency and and all that stuff like and regardless of how true or not true it is we need Bitcoin to be, we, Bitcoin needs to be environmentally friendly, TM, right? Like, <laughs> and, and like, you know, regardless of, regardless of how, like, you know, whether, like, we know what Bitcoin mining and like the economic incentive it is and it ha places around the world, we know this, like we've put in hours of time to understand this and, and incentives and, and it doesn't need a council, it doesn't need any of this stuff. But the fact of the matter is like, in this fight, uh, in this global fight, um, and like you know, there's there is this big trend of like Marxism, especially with the climate crowd. Like Bitcoin, the narrative around energy is like super important, and it's probably going to be attacked really, really hard. Both from like you know the people with a lot to lose, the the Davos crowd, central bankers, etc., but also, and it's already starting, but also like Ethereum, you know, like the the proof of stake like or the crypto crowd like it's already starting like charles hawkins harkinson or whatever the the cardano guy and like uh what's his name the scammer brad uh the xrp guy <laughs> they're coming on yeah garling house a scammer they're going on cnbc and bloomberg and it's talking about how how bad for the environment bitcoin is and how it was a great invention but now it's you know outdated so like i think sailor knows this sailor's smart and i think sailor knew he'd get some shit for it but like uh, you know, he's just trying to trying to stay ahead of the curve on on the narrative game. And he said that at the consensus panel today. He's like, the narrative, regardless of of like whether it's real or imaginary, is super important. And I agree. I didn't I didn't watch that consensus uh, speech, but that I think that's kind of the idea that that I've I've. You know, like I've kind of gotten that Sailor seems to have been playing 5D chess for a while and he seems to have gotten Bitcoin like we do. But I think BAP does have a good point in saying that, you know, he's a billionaire. He He's part of he's part of the incumbent system in, in the sense that he, you know, he has he has investors and in, and the SEC and all that to to deal with and you know we're just lowly plebs and and we understand the system and we understand that like bitcoin is environmentally friendly and for for anyone out there that that wants the the hard facts on it go listen to um friar haas on nick carter's on the brink podcast and he he's he's very big on the environmental impact of bitcoin and and he's been doing it for since 2014 and one of the things that i picked up from from the that podcast is he was saying that on the world grid essentially it's something like 29 percent of of world energy use is renewables and 
since the whole idea and the whole thing that started it was Elon Musk saying he won't or Tesla will not use Bitcoin or transact in Bitcoin until there's quote unquote more sustainable and more renewable energy use. And as of now, the best educated guests that are out there is that essentially Bitcoin has more renewable energy use than the global system at large, somewhere between 29 and 39 percent of uh, all the energy going into mining Bitcoin is already renewable. So Bitcoin is the most environmentally friendly industry out there as is, even though it's not the biggest one. And that's not even to consider the environmental impacts of gold and central banking and, you know, the military industrial complex. So if you want to, if you want to really dive into it, go follow our boy Friar Haas. He's got a bunch of great uh, presentations on, on YouTube. One of them is uh, Orange Rock Bad, Orange or Yellow Rock Bad, Orange Coin Good. He did that at Riga, I think it was last year or two years ago. So I think, I think what Dylan said is really important in the sense that narratives are huge and it's been, it's been a big topic lately in Twitter. Like, are we falling into their framing by even combating and agreeing to their terms? I know Marty's been going pretty ham on Twitter saying like, reframe these fucking conversations because we already know what time it is. We already know that Bitcoin not only uses renewable, but is incentivized to minimize the, the methane uh, flaring. So like as a Bitcoiner, this is, this is just like, Oh my God. Okay. We're, we're doing that FUD again. But as someone that doesn't know about, mining as much as us and isn't as deep as we are in the rabbit hole then it does seem like a a non-negotiable they're like oh my god bitcoin uses so much electricity it's it's as much as a small country and we're like yeah man it should it should literally be the most the biggest country in the world it should literally have more energy use because a sound monetary ledger is arguably more important than you know people gaming xbox or your refrigerators or you know what your electric vehicle is being plugged into the wall or or whatever whatever you want to use your electricity but that's even that's even like a a non-point when you consider the idea of like look you can do whatever you want with your energy I will do whatever I want with my energy use. As long as I have a free market price for it, then it really doesn't matter what I do with it. So like Dylan said, there is a very strong narrative of this, uh, you know, eco-terrorist slash, uh, you know, Marxist trend going on. And we, we are a small minority. So I don't, I don't want to say maybe we have to do a better job with the narrative or the framing because... To be honest, we I, I kind of have the feeling like we should just tell them to go fuck themselves and like <laughs> blocks are still chugging. Like what what can you do about it? But I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm getting old and salty already. Where I'm just like, man, this is this is getting getting all tiring. I'm with you, bro. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you because I went to uh, I actually you know also visit uh visited uh very hard left school and uh man you know i don't think we should be entertaining them at all i think it's just like a waste of time because they don't see bitcoin as a central so they see it as something added on top of something as a waste right so i think like arguing with people who already think of it as a waste it's like just such an uphill battle it doesn't make sense i listened to a podcast with uh jeff booth and and lynn alden i it was Jeff Booth did a fantastic job of kind of just reframing that question, Uh, asking, like, as as Bitcoiners, we probably need to do a better job of of asking, you know, our our fiat minded opponents, like, how does like, how can we solve our energy crisis or our environmental crisis uh, under an inflationary monetary system? Because uh, 
kind of like when I think about it, like uh, like Surfer Jim gave his presentation on Bitcoin as real estate. And if you are always increasing the amount of real estate that you have, it's like we're living on an ever expanding earth. And with the way that money printing is going, it's like our earth is expanding at an uh, at an accelerating pace. Whereas, you know, Bitcoin is is still like growing ever so slightly but it will be growing at a decreasing rate. And and then, you know, our, our resource management will actually act like like all the resources on Earth are scarce, which they are. Ooh. Go off, King. Dang. <laughs> Get hit him with it, uh, Jennifer. If, if I can play like a little bit of devil's advocate with with what michael saylor pulled do it uh, i would say i would say that you know what he did was was kind of brilliant because he was appealing to elon's ego about being invited to an exclusive council because he's different than everybody else and trying to draw him in like he's going to actually navigate that conversation or fix the environment because the only way that he could do that is by inviting this, you know, big big billionaire to a, an exclusive club. When in actuality, he's maybe just giving presentations on what Bitcoin is already doing. <laughs> and if you want to make some tweaks on that, it's no big deal. And it's it's just a show. Yeah, I'd agree with you. I, I was listening to a Citadel Dispatch and it, it was Croasis or Croesus. I, I don't know how to say his name, but... He said the same thing exactly, like, to appease a narcissist like Elon, you make him feel special, and then you kind of just show him, like, yeah, Bitcoin is already doing this. And I guess, you know, back to the, the narrative framing, I guess, you know, it wouldn't hurt to be as transparent as possible in Bitcoin mining energy use for, for those eco-terrorists out there, try to, you know, appease them, but... Then again, like my my contrarian Bitcoinness is popping out, and I'm just like, man, fuck them. Like, <laughs> like Bitcoin is good for the environment. Like, just go look at what upstream data is doing. They're they're literally helping the Earth breathe. You know, they're they're flaring tons of methane or stopping tons of methane flaring, and they're mining Bitcoin for it. So like. The incentive now is out there for for Bitcoin miners to heal the earth and and other people just don't realize this yet and they're just kind of screeching, you know. They're they're just out there complaining and you know, saying that they should ban cryptocurrencies because of its energy use and and lock us up in jail. And we're like, guys, we're probably the most peaceful ones out here. We're not telling you guys that you should, you know, go to jail for for what the fiat fiat monetary system does even though they probably should we're just like yeah go fuck yourself we're just gonna buy bitcoin stack and uh you know try and stop millions of people around the earth to do that because that would really show everyone's true colors and i think that's the underlying basis here that the real the real story here is not the energy use it's that they want to control people and it's all about control and until you see through the lines and you start to realize that it's always been about control, you you might fall for these narratives and these these feel good, you know, headlines that make you feel okay about sticking your head in the sand and avoiding reality. And I just wanted to Fuck add yeah. That. Fuck yeah. And people have never even seen a free market before. First time in their lives and their parents' lives. Everyone's in shock. Dude. Fuck yeah. What? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, re renewable energy doesn't necessarily mean it's uh, good for the environment. Like if you see so hydro dams, you know, when they build, they basically destroy the environment, right? Like imagine you're a fish, you're swimming through the turbine, you get like, you know, all like kicked in the face and it's not a pleasant experience. And then you cannot swim upstream, you know? So it's like, yeah, it's renewable, but uh, is it actually good for the environment? I don't know. I'm not a marine, you know, biologist, but... Uh, Something is telling me it might not necessarily be very good for the environment. Yeah, if if you um 
If you go listen to that podcast that Nick Carter and Friar Haas did, uh, they they go into it pretty in depth, and also the Citadel Dispatch. They they go into into all that, and it's really not a pretty sight, man. So, you know, big Bitcoin Bitcoin win, man. Bitcoin already won, and I mean, just the world hasn't caught up yet, in my opinion. All right. Well, uh, I don't know. Anyone want to throw in a rant or two, or we we can move on. We can move on to some next topics. I just want to say that chart with the gold volatility got me thinking that there's some bottoms to catch out here. The one that Dylan Dylan put on. Yeah. So come on, spit it out. You're getting bullish, dude. Are we getting cosmically bullish. I mean. That chart is like marriage. it's only ten. <laughs> it's only ten years um, time, but there's red lines that were going below the zero mark, and I want Bitcoin when that happens. Right. Basically, dollar cost average. Right. Well, I mean that's a that's a perfect segue because I did get some some texts this week. Um, I I'm known as the bitcoiner in in my friend circle they they don't talk to me about it when i want to talk to them about it but i'll get random texts every once in a while you know like oh where should i buy it is this a good time to buy and this week one of my friends texted me and he and like this is verbatim the, the text he goes when does your bitcoin crystal ball say bitcoin is going back up and i'm like bro i don't know it's cheap <laughs> uh, he's like he's like an old old friend i'm like bro it's cheap like uh, just <laughs> just go out and buy it you know like continue to buy it and then i i sent him um a chart i forget who it was but preston pish retweeted it and it was essentially the chart of this bull run compared to i believe it was a 2017 bull run and they just they lined up so perfectly and everyone was freaking out on Twitter and I'm just like I I, I don't know if you guys saw but on my Twitter I, I changed my name to Zen Optimus Fields because everyone's like in wartime mode you know other people are freaking out they're calling this the top and I'm like guys like this this feels like midway 2017 this is this is basically like 3k Bitcoin before it jumped up to. 20k and in comparison if we do that same movement in this bull run it's gonna be you know a couple hundred thousand dollars per bitcoin by the end of the year and i mean it doesn't seem like people are ready for it out there i'm like guys i thought this is this is what we were preparing for the whole bear market and now it's happening and people are freaking out like what's going on people people that were saying super cycle are now like oh this is the top i'm like guys come on Let's let's chill out a little bit. Like, move move your head away from the from the bird spaces and and go you know go soak up some oxygen because there's a whole world out there and it feels like we're still mid bull run, guys. And I, so I always just tell my friend like, guys, fucking buy, go out there and buy. Like, sell your ass and go buy because it's about to pump. That's that's my tingle. Ngu Tech says so. <laughs> <laughs> exactly so guys all right we might as well get into it what what's uh what's your feeling on the price is this uh are we mid bull run is this a top is this coordinated fud it's a pause it's pause pause yeah so this is like i i start, i really think this is more like 2013 2014 cycle the first half after the first having than last one um when it was you know like 27 2017 um there's no i there's just no way that it's over yet uh maybe that's just me not wanting it to be over but uh <laughs> I, it, it's the demand has just started surfacing for normal people and yeah a lot of them got wrecked this week 
and a lot of them were trading altcoins. Um, Good. But, 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 <laughs> but like, when I when I look at things like the BlockFi credit card coming out in the next few months, Fold is got their you know product basically like in launch as we speak. Bitcoin twenty twenty one. Who I know a few of you are involved with. Like, there's a lot of really big things in the narrative that ETF is going to probably get approved this year. Um, you know, th there's like a lot of really important things that are going on in the ecosystem. And so for that reason, I think that we're still going well above a hundred, if not 200 K taproot. Yeah. Taproot's about to get laid through. Like it, like, yeah, I just we're thought like, we, from idea. This is a major oh yeah, thank you for, for dropping that, Tony. This is a the beginning. You know, we're 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 early, though that chart is in March where it's a little um a little out of date at this point, but we've got a ways to go. What if everyone at the conference, like at one specific time, just does a smash buy? Like we just, it's gonna just drop like, like every green, other time. We just make a giant <laughs> green candle. Like, all right, guys, it's green candle time. Like, fucking smash by, and the bull run comments. It will drop like every other time. Yeah, coordinated like old Wall Street pit on Twitter. Coordinated on Twitter, like just like even people who aren't there, like a Bitcoin yeah. Twitter coordinated by. I mean, I'm down. I, I've been a part of a few, and uh, every time, it's cheaper sats for everyone. So either way, it's a win-win. It's yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a it's a service. Um, really, it's fucking it's a service. conference. Yeah, we're doing pump that. Green we'll, we'll we'll uh we'll we'll coordinate some some stuff then. I guess we we got some some meme action over there. But I mean, to your point, um. Back to that Friar Haas podcast, he said something on the lines of there is roughly like 46 million Bitcoiners in America. And if every one of those million, that's just America, if every one of them just did a, a daily DCA of about like 10 bucks, I think he said it's like a half or five hundred billion dollar wall of of constant buy pressure. So a half a trillion dollar buy pressure wall continuously would easily push the Bitcoin price up to about five hundred K per. So I think it's on us now to just continue to amass the dollar cost average army because like we we say it all the time, you know, like the plebs run this shit, and of course, big money pumping our bags feels good, but it's really about you know the little man still getting into the game, still buying Bitcoin and and being consistent with it because I know personally a lot of people haven't fully wrapped their head around the whole DCA army idea. They just buy a little Bitcoin here or there, and I I feel like I'm going crazy over here. I'm taking crazy pills, just like telling people, I'm like guys. Like you need to buy consistently every day, every week, every month, whatever, whenever you get money, it doesn't really matter how much you buy. You just got to be consistent. And um, I forget who was, I think it was Nico last week saying that we, you know, the way we, we shill Bitcoin is important because if we're just shilling it like, oh, you're going to get rich, just buy it once, sit on your ass. And, and that's the end of the story. Um, you know, it sounds good. It, I like I wish it I wish that was the case, you know, like I really do. But like you need conviction. You need to buy as much as possible and you need to you need to build your your freaking your your nest egg because it's all about buying sats consistently. It's all about making sure that uh like Fryer said, you know, if you want the price to be stable, you gotta put your nuts on the table. So guys, I think we need to shill the DCA a little harder out there because and I don't think everyone's buying like we do. We're we're a very small minority out there buying. So maybe, you know, Bitcoin conference is a good time to do it. If we can get all 12,000 of them to smash by, maybe we can 
get a little price movement because I've been a part of some on Twitter and <laughs> nothing happened, but it's still fun. It's it's all fun and games, you know? It's all more sats. Dude, I think the DCA thing is the hardest thing for them to wrap their heads around because they want to seem smart. So they wait for like a dip so they can like leverage their Kentalon effect, right? Because it doesn't matter who does the DCA of those 10 bucks so long as they're coming in, right? Like that daily demand. Most people just can't wrap their heads around that ever. You know, you would have told them five years ago, put a dollar a day. They might have still not done that, but they'd be worth like six figures now from like a few thousand bucks. I don't know. It's hard. I don't know. There's no good answers. I've been ripping my hair out before Bitcoin. Um, trying to get people to DCA into like other investments that are like they could actually wrap their heads around. I still wouldn't do it. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm with you though. You just reminded me of like what Hoddle said a long time ago. He's like, why do I or why do Bitcoiners care about your life more than you do? And it's just, man, it it feels like that sometimes, you know, like people are hard headed. And I know I am. I am one of the most hard headed. But like once you see it, you can't unsee it. And man, it's it's like it's so simple. It's like what we said in the beginning before we were recording. It's like it's too simple that people need to complicate it. They they need to make it like a, a hard mountain to climb so that they can feel like they're doing something. And we're over here just like, man, just buy Bitcoin, stack sats, and shit post on Twitter and repeat continuously on an infinite loop. And that's the way. But uh, I guess it takes a lot of hours to get to that point. We did all the work for you guys. Like, just listen to us. Exactly. But, uh, you they know, also. Work. They, believe in stake. they don't believe in work, man. They believe in stake. So that's why if Ray Dalio, even if he does one-tenth of the reading as Sailor, they'll take his word as higher because he has the bigger stake. Right? Proof. This is this is why proof of stake is garbage. It's the same Cantillon bullshit. You know? Fuck them. That's why I'm that's why I'm bullish on the plebs. I'm not bullish on these fucking billionaires. I can give a fuck. They're gonna buy it for sure anyways. And they don't care if they buy it now or two X from now. Like it doesn't change their lives that much. You know, liquidity's higher, they can put more money. Like for them, that's how they look at it. Like mom and pop, like when they don't want to DCA even like something they could easily afford, that shit fucking bothers me. Cause then they just like wait for a dip, they buy, and then they get scared because they bought way too much at once. And even at a worse price than their DCA would have got them anyways, right? So fucking frustrating. It's unbelievable. Well, to your oh. <laughs> well, to your point, Shishi, I mean, if, if this price dump didn't show anything to the noobs out there, it's like you're selling your Bitcoins because you're scared of the volatility. And then basically once the price bottoms out and, and goes sideways and gets stable it comes out that, you know, like Ray Dalio's buying Bitcoin. So like motherfuckers are selling their Bitcoin to one of the wealthiest persons in the world because they think it's over. And it's like, guys, this is just beginning. Like it's still cheap. Come on, man. Just just freaking, you know, get your auto DCA going. Don't look at the price. Don't look at Twitter. Like just make sure that you, you know, maybe just make sure that you have a, a dashboard up and that you can see that blocks are still coming in, you know, filter out all the noise and, and see what the signal is. And it's hash rates going up. Blocks are still coming in, you know, like Bitcoin's alive. You, you don't have to follow all the circus on Twitter to get your news. It's fun. It's, you know, it's a good dopamine rush, but really, you know, like I, I've been telling Jessifer for a couple of weekends now. It's like, yeah, man, like I didn't look at Twitter all weekend. Like you guys are still arguing about this stuff. Like the network's chugging along. Like what's there to argue about? I DCA'd, I bought some sats, you know, there's, there's still Bitcoin blocks coming in. Just like simplify your life guys. Like it, it doesn't really have to be that hard and, and you don't have to watch the price that much. Just fucking enjoy your life and, and buy Bitcoin. It's simple. And if you listen to us, you can come to the Citadel. <laughs> That's pretty much yeah, why I'm begging you to buy. If I uh, Dude, may Swan, add something Swan to Bitcoin that. is the only thing I recommend now because it's like only the buy ramp and it's only Bitcoin and it's like promotes DCA. 
And even then, people like circumvented and buy instantly. I'm like, God damn it. Still a river, huge river fan here. Kind of a river simp myself. Show me. Show me. I never used it. It's it's like Swan. It has more of like a family office, private equity, or like private company focused uh, side to it. Um, but I don't know. All like the, the wealthy people I know, I point them to River because I'm like, uh, you'll get this. Like their their customer service, they get you know your high net worth individual, you know mindset. They speak your language. Like I, I don't. I swear to God, I don't work for River, but like uh, I I was facilitating a a, a client of mine's uh, uh, getting his tax forms. I email River. I'm like, yo, can I get this? And within literally 30 seconds, I've got a response. I got all the documents I need. That was some incredible customer service i challenge you to get anything that's not uh absolutely you know make you want to blow your brains out from like coinbase or something swan is awesome too from an education standpoint but you know i i do i kind of a river simp myself i thought Talk that to about the automation are... huh? well well um cb cb has a point because i i think i kind of do that same thing like to just my average pleb friend, you know, just just someone that's just an average dude. I I you know I I have like a rundown of of uh, companies that I give them. You know, first I usually just see you know, do you have Cash App? Most people have it. It's the it's the easiest way. There's there's trade offs to it, but you know everyone has it on their phone. It's easy and it's pretty quick. Uh, Swan, I, I recommend Swan to people because it's got the cheapest fees. So once they get their toes wet, you know, they they get hit with some cash app fees and, and they text me back like, yo, what is this? Like, what is going on? And like, it's a business. They're getting their cut. But to someone that is more familiar with trading, maybe has had some experience with, uh, you know, professional trading houses in traditional finance, I, I'd kind of go with CB and, and chill them river because... It just looks so pretty, and I've never used it, but just what like their their user interface and the user experience over there, I, it it's top notch, man. And and you can you can basically get like data and information on every buy you've ever had. So it it's just like it's really pretty stuff over there. I think their fees are a little higher than Swan, but you know not everyone's like us, Bab. Where we're like, all right, like what can I get the most bang for my buck? What's the cheapest fees? Some people, you know, they, they like that customer service. They, they like that user interface where they can see what's happening with every investment they made. So that's that's kind of my rundown when I shill it to people. And uh, one last word, I promise. But uh, you can register. Uh, you can you can uh, have a corporate entity through River. I don't think you can do that with Swan. I think it's just an individual. Don't quote me on that. But, like, if you have, like, a, an LLC... Or like a wealth preservation entity, you can do that through River. Let's go. Um, so Swan has private client services. For sure, I saw that on their website. I haven't used it or anything. I'm talking about, you know, random plebs as well. Like, what's the best for them? Um, but, but River, you know, I'm sure like anybody can sign up for it, right? That's why you're mentioning it. I'm just curious, as to, is there more controls that you can put on the DCA? So like, you know... Maybe I want a DCA only when Bitcoin goes down a certain amount. You know, I want more control over the DCA. Whereas Swan, it's just like time frame amount and just like prepay the fees, right? So I don't know if you could tell me more about it. Not just the prettiness of it, because like, like I could give a fuck about how good it looks. You know, I just wanted to do what it says it's going to do. I tell people if if they like are going to smash by, I just, I mean, I send them to either Kraken or to Coinbase if they don't care about fees, Coinbase Pro, because those are the two lowest. It's either a half a percent or I think Kraken's a quarter percent. Uh, but I send people to Kraken if they want to buy like 50 or 100 grand because they used to only accept wire transfers. So that was kind of a downside. But I think they do ACH now. Um, but Coinbase, like I've done this multiple times where I've orange build somebody and then giving them the coinbase pro info and 
Coinbase will usually, if you take a picture of your ID, will let you, they'll front you like up to 25 grand same day. So like you can go from creating an account to linking it with your bank and buying market by, you know, several thousand dollars worth in like not that long. So I think, I think it, Swan doesn't really have, have that. Yeah, um, no. Because, and, and uh, Swan's fees are also higher, but I would say Swan is great for someone who forgets to buy. So for someone who's really new and uh, forgets to buy Bitcoin because they're not thinking about it 24-7 like all of us freaks, then Swan's great for them. For that, they also cover the withdrawal fees too, which is like another, just one less thing you have to explain. <laughs> Uh, I've made shilling Coinbase and anything that sells shit coins because if they end up getting a shit coins, I'm like, oh, I gave them that, you know, fuck. That's true. I guess like the only people I give Coinbase to are people who I have had the conversation with. Look, Coinbase is a shit coin casino and they make all these dazzling wizamaroos or whatever. To, like they even give you free shit coins. <laughs> But, but like, if ultimately, like, if, if they know that and they can resist, then it's a great spot to buy, you know, a lot. For a While we're on this topic, did anyone see the news that PayPal is announcing that they're going to start allowing withdrawals? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I did see that. That's cool. Even yeah. though PayPal yeah. sucks. That massive rehypothecation foot, obviously, when they started. And I knew that they would have to enable it, but. You know, I don't know if that still stands. I don't know what your guys' thoughts on that is. Because I know there was a huge debate, like, right away when they announced that they were going to, you know, custody Bitcoin and allow people to buy. Yeah, I mean, I I kind of, uh, I, think I, I think I'd agree with you that it did seem like, you know, of all companies, PayPal might fall into the rehypothecation arena. Um, they wouldn't be the first one in Bitcoin. We, we know like BlockFi does that, but, um, I, I think, you know, it's, it's technically bullish for, for the normies. Cause I, I have had people ask me like, yo, should I buy it on PayPal? And, uh, you know, I have to tell them like, no, you can't withdraw it. But now, I mean, like, I guess, I guess it's not oh, that no. bad. Yeah. I mean, like I, I definitely would recommend other stuff, but oh, no. I, you know, people are going to do what they want to do and, and some people will buy it on PayPal and it's like, all right, just withdraw it. You know, like the least you can do is, is get, get it off the, you know, their exchange. Cause you never know what the hell they're going to do. But, um, you know, like I, I chill, like I chill what I chill and, uh, people don't listen, <laughs> but <laughs> that's, that's on them. Swan, Swan auto withdraw is also amazing which is like a feature that I find to be like, you can just fully automate this whole thing away. It's unbelievable. I just love the fact that like, you know, Bitcoin, uh, we, we've got certain, we've got certain demands and, and the market just generally moves towards our demands since we're like such a consensus, uh, like organism, I guess. Like, uh, like for example, just like watching Taproot happen. I mean, we've got, we've got, nearly global consensus that like this is the direction that we want to to move like uh, to to move ourselves uh to move this technology forward and and all of these different actors you know whatever language they speak whatever country they're from uh they're they're changing their operations uh to to you know catch up to like our collective understanding that that this is where we want to go yeah, and I mean, what what's uh, what's up with Taproot Land? I I saw we we basically got every pool right. on there, but we we just missed yeah, this I period. Green blocks fly in next uh next signal adjustment. So the next difficulty adjustment is in like what two or three days, and then uh, once that happens, assuming goes as is now, uh, two weeks after that that's when it will signal and it has to be throughout that difficulty adjustment period, not just like a rolling trailing amount. It, it's, 
It's fantastic. Go to taproot.watch and yeah. just watch all those green blocks show up as all these different mining pools are are switching to signal to taproot. Uh, the current total of the of the 97. mining pool hash rate is 97.2%. Uh, that that activation threshold that we need to reach is 90% of all the signaling blocks that that come in. So we're it's been we're almost there. It's been 50 blocks since a non-taproot block was mined. Let's go. And another like one just day. came in. Damn, that's sick. That's awesome. I got asked by a uh, personal victory. I got asked by a boomer, baby boomer today, what taproot was. So um, we're, we're infiltrating the, uh, the email lists, guys. Awesome. <laughs> I talked to a crypto consultant today. It was not pretty. Uh, <laughs> it sounds horrible. Ooh. Go, keep going. Yeah. I want to hear. Tell me more about this crypto. Okay. <laughs> Give me some good, some good one-liners. My Give, me some some Give me some context, I, bro. Well, well, I so like, uh, you know, a, a, a boomer had a crypto consultant that I, I thought was like going to be their nephew or something, but it was seemed like a scammer guy um and and yeah man it was like painful because they kept asking about you know like oh it was just gosh um you know be 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 weary of anybody who's who's working for uh for any coin but bitcoin i guess is the moral of the story because if you hear the word crypto i hear I hear I'm out. So. <laughs> Crypto and blockchain are the, the red flags. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I, an immediate there's, filter. I, there's a top 20. I, I literally was just, I, I, I don't ever use coin market cap because it's nothing but a, a shit coin casino. But this, um, some, they had some coin here. There's like a top 20 coin. And I've literally never even heard of its name before. Uh, and, and apparently it came out like two weeks ago. Um, so you can't, you can't like, they, the marketing that comes behind, you know, the, the juggernaut marketing <laughs> is behind some of these altcoins is amazing. And to, uh, to, to the email lists, they don't know any better, you know? So we got to tell, like, we got to tell them. I'll say that that I uh, I am, you know, part like part time. I have my own like little consulting gig, and I just, you know, basically you? get paid. To, <laughs> get, no, <laughs> I get I get paid to tell. I I people pay me to tell them to to stack sats and hodl. <laughs> oh boy. It's like, yeah, it's like. So, what do I need to know here? I'm like, all right. And, you know, depending on how deep they want to go. I'm like, so all you got to do is just get as much of this thing as you can and not- and then nothing else. I'm like, wait. I'm like, yeah, that's it, man. So. What about Dogecoin? Get out. They're like, yeah. So what about, what about Dogecoin? I'm like, bruh, shut the fuck up. That's not a reliable long-term business. See, this is why, like. You, you, <laughs> I'm like, scamming them. I'm scamming them for sats. <laughs> This is literally why people get scammed, because if you think about it, like I I think Optimus mentioned this earlier, like Bitcoin is boring. Like you just buy it. You don't even get to like look at it. You just buy it. And then what? You you, you, You do nothing with it. And so these crypto consultants, oh my God, they... They are constantly coming out with new upgrades and new wallet features and new blockchain protocols and like all of these things to keep you music interested. on the blockchain. Blockchain right. 3.0. Right. Like those are the things that you have to like learn. So they have to they have to justify 
their way to charging you more hourly rate. Like with Bitcoin, it's like, oh, I, I, I told you everything. Well, well how, and they're like, well, well, that's not a very good business model. It's like, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> so if you see a crypto consultant and he's wealthy, <laughs> probably not a very good one. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, perfect scarcity including what you invest in people can't handle it but bro like there's got to be another one at least you know there's got to be something else it's like all right you know yeah there is you're going to be poor holding it it's like you're going to have it it's going to be there it's just not going to be fun or maybe it might be i don't know you'll be poor oh, i i know this whole like you know self-promotion thing can be a little shitty and and grifty sometimes but i don't know I, if if you are the kind of person who regularly gets inquiries from people um Make yourself a a real quick like Squarespace with a simple payment portal, and and just link people to that because um because not only will they actually I find they actually listen to you more, they take you seriously, and then it's like a really good like filter for keeping a lot of bullshit out of um your daily life, and it's really it's like at this point in the bull cycle, it's it, I would say it's like almost crucial from a headspace and psychological point of view. I have been able to um, like eliminate probably 50 to 100 hours worth of wasted time just by like linking people to like, yeah, if you want to talk more, just I do it through a Slack group. And I only talk about Bitcoin. And if you pay this super low fee, I'll talk to you at, you know, endlessly. But like, that is the that you know for the time being while the price is going up that's how i'm gonna talk to you i i i, I gotta run other businesses in this space and i i just i gotta keep myself sane i love that turn it in i like i, I feel there's just like it's easy to t I, I orange pill people in like two hours i've got it down First, I teach him about the history of money. Then I teach him about Bitcoin. Then I teach him about Ethereum and all the other coins and why they're not going to work. So that in the future, when I'm not around to defend defend against altcoins for them, uh, against the shitcoin C, then they are already armed with that knowledge. And then I get them on a Swan DCA and either cold cold storage or multi-sig wallet, depending on, you know, how, how ham they're about to go. We're, we're talking like, maybe you can have, maybe like in a dinner, you know, like, so it's important that we like as knowledgeable Bitcoiners are spreading Bitcoin, because when I hear people talk about crypto, it's usually, like people talking about crypto, meaning not meaning not Bitcoin, because they can make more money that way. Because there's more stuff to talk about, because it's new and fake. Uh, yeah, I say like, show me someone who's been into finger quotes crypto for eight years, and then I'll listen to them because they probably you know know a lot about what they're talking about. But the thing is, everyone who's into finger quotes crypto just they've been in it for like six months like they they haven't been around they i don't want to get you know gatekeep this but like this is you gotta pay your dues a bit agreed you haven't hodled through a 80 percent drop yet you ain't you're living not, <laughs> you ain't living man <laughs> oh man all right guys well um you since since bat brought it up uh, and we have it on the list. Is this the last time to get cheap sets? What What are we thinking, guys? I, I I swear I say that every time. Like this is this is the cheapest sets you'll ever get. But it it's feels... always cheap. Oof! Hit them with it. Phew. <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, dude. I I I said that to my friend. He's like, "What's the uh, you know who asked me about my crystal ball?" And I'm like, "Guys." Like, I'm feeling in my balls. Like, I'm getting the ball tingle. It seems like it's going to pop. And he's like, well, as long as you're getting the ball tingles, bro, like, we know it's going to blow. So, shouts out to uh, Pirate Beach Bums 
technical analysis over there. If you get the ball tingles, you know it's about to explode. So, um, I don't know. Well, I, I'd say it's cheap. profit is right. We're gonna pop up to seventy five k right after this. Yeah, exactly. CCB knows for the giant green dildo at the conference. <laughs> I mean, we're we're already like I, I'm looking at the chart right now, and this this red monthly candle right here is pretty aggressive. So I'd have to say that this is the low. Like, if you're listening to this and you're not stacking, even a little bit of Bitcoin. Yeah. What was that? Yes, financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly buy bitcoin like it's are we doing a meetup a, a, a kindergarten next week i mean uh wednesday? yeah yeah we'll be here wednesday uh i don't I don't leave until thursday the next morning so okay cool. well yeah we'll be we'll have a uh actually i, I need to talk to jessica because i don't know when he is but yeah we we should have one as of now guys we will have one next week and um yeah well just fucking go buy some bitcoin all right guys i uh i guess we're we're up we're up hitting that hour mark guys so um let's just wrap this up any last thoughts any anyone want to go on a little bullish rant for for those listening or actually maybe just for us so that we can get excited and go stack some sats right now why why we uh sign off no no takers I was talking about Bitcoin since 7 a.m. this morning to about 18 different people. I've been in conference rooms all fucking day, and it's driven me mad, but I get to do what I love. I get to talk about Bitcoin, and people listen. I've never been this excited to actually work in this space. And um, I think the drop actually made more... I've had more people buy in the past two weeks than in the past six months. So... Um, you're seeing normal people buying. I think the buy the dip message, I think it's finally getting to them. So uh, see you guys at Bitcoin Miami. I'll be there. Let's go. Bullish. Let's go. Bullish since March. The uh, the balance has uh, dropped of coins on exchanges. Like Coins keep coming off. I, I'm looking at an old chart, so it's out of date now. But coins keep coming off exchanges, right? That's regardless of what the price does, it's you, you have to think of it like insurance float where like the whatever the exchange there's so few of the coins on the exchanges today that whatever the price is is not really reflective of all of the coins in the ecosystem. It's just a small subset. And so because there's so few coins traded it's much easier to move the price on the exchanges both upward and downward so i wouldn't let the uh price trip you up all about quantity just just zoom out forget about forget about the price this technology is so superior it's causing the pope to take to twitter <laughs> to, to to question it uh ray dalio is buying in and the u.s has announced that they're working on a digital dollar just because the global reserve currency has to compete with a technology that is already superior by a long shot and it's getting better and we've coordinated the world to make improvements like taproot uh, i i can't get more bullish than that even god is trying to stop bitcoin and he can't so <laughs> He'll be on Twitter before you know God it. Is Bitcoin. Yeah. I don't I don't know like if if you know but like if God can't stop Twitter or Bitcoin Twitter or Bitcoin <laughs> it's going to be tough for anybody else. Oh man. This this is when kindergarten gets spite down from the heavens. <laughs> but man, hey, Go. that that was a bullish ending right there. Jester and Bap. Woo. Dang. And CB? Oh, man. Guys, if you're not stacking, there, there's a problem. So without without further ado, and on that note, guys, 
This was Teacher's Lounge, episode 90. Ten more episodes, guys, and we're at 100. So, geez, it's it's been a ride. Um, but, yeah, guys, uh, thanks for coming out. Thanks for listening. Next week, we'll see each other in Miami. So that's going to be lit. All right, peace out.